Hey guys, I'm Sean from Blurb, and today I'm going to be going through reordering backordered items with you. So firstly, I'm going to be showing you how backorder items are generated through a sale. So what a backorder item is, is an item that can't be fulfilled on a sale since it has no, uh, well, none of itself in stock. So what we then do is we put that sale on backorder, and then we go and we purchase that item, bring it into our warehouse, so we're then able to fulfill the original order. Um, so there are two current ways of, uh, of doing this within Deer. And then there's a report that will help us navigate it a bit more smoothly. So I'm going to show you the first way now, and then I'll show you the second way, and then I'll show you the report. So here we have a sale for Bluehub as the customer, and then we have ChalQ as the product. If we hover over ChalQ, we'll see that we have minus 11 available in stock, and we have 104 available in other locations. If I was to just use this item here, uh, we order, let's say, three of this item, and we use the authorize this, it's going to tell us we can't do it because we have no stock available. We'll then be prompted with this and told that we're able to be, uh, put this item on back order if we would like. We can then do so. And what that's going to do is mark this as a back order item with the system. So if we ever go to run either the back order report or this purchase order here, it's going to make us order that item specifically. So if I was now to click create purchase order, we can either do for back ordered or for the entire sale. So obviously for the entire sale means even if items aren't back ordered, we'll be made to purchase those as well. Or if we just do for back ordered, we can order our items that are missing and uh, are making it so that we can't fulfill the sale. So if we was to click that like so, it's going to generate a purchase order for us that we can then fulfill in order to complete that sale. So here we have our purchase order. We'll need to select the supplier like so. If the item has a supplier against it, it's going to predetermine that or pre-generate that up here and fill that in for you. And we'll then need to enter our fixed price since we don't have one, since we didn't have a supplier. So we'll then have £1.50 as that. Once we're happy with this order, we're then able to authorize it like so. And then receiving the stock from the order. If this was a real scenario, you'd obviously have a delay between sending out the order, receiving the stock, and then invoicing it. However, since for testing purposes, I'm just going to be demonstrating this by ordering it and then immediately receiving in the stock. So now that we've received in our three items into our main warehouse, we're able to go back to our original sale. And at this point, we could re-pick up our original sale, pick our items, and then fulfill it like so. So that would be your generic back order. If you had a very, very rare one-off back order, you'd be doing it like that. If you was doing back orders a bit more regularly, you'd want to be using the reorder back order report found in the purchases section here. If we click into this, you'll see the report be it given here. Now, the first thing that you'll see here is as an error list, and that's because these items don't have suppliers against them. In order for you to run the back order to, uh, report, you're going to need suppliers against items because otherwise it won't be able to generate you a purchase order because it won't know who the supplier is. Other than that, we can then filter on our customer. So if we wanted to fill all of our back order items for a specific important client, we could do so here. We can also uh, select certain products that we want to fulfill, or we can fulfill our goods for certain locations. So if we didn't have a lot of stock in our warehouse, we could do all of our back order items in the warehouse. Once we're done with that, we can select the suppliers we want to generate our orders for. As you can see, I've got two here. If I was to click Bayside Club, it's going to generate me their items. Whereas if I was to click Fusion Development, it will generate me their items. If I was to click All, it's going to generate me both of their items. However, if I now hit Reorder, since it's using different suppliers, it's going to create me two purchase orders. If I was able to purchase both of these items from the same supplier, it would generate all of that on the one order for me to make things easier. So I do recommend when you're doing this that you do it by supplier. That's going to be your general reordering and how that works and how you're able to maintain why items are needing to be reordered and get them back into stock. Now I'm going to show you how you can monitor what items are being reordered for active sales. So if I go over here to our report section and then go to our purchase reports and scroll down, we should have um, and maybe sale reports. Sale, find sale back order by purchase order. So if we click into this, it's going to give us our sales orders on the right here. And then it's going to give us our purchase orders in the middle. 
and then a quantity ordered and our receive stock here. So what this is going to allow you to do is for a specific sale. So say, for instance, I wanted to find out uh, what my status of my goods was on sale order uh, SO11. I could then search that in here or filter on it like so. And I could find out that I can't fulfill my uh, order 11 currently because I've got all items on back order that aren't ready um, with Bayside Club. Then I can, if I want to, go into the purchase order here. I can check out if that stock has been ordered, if it's been invoiced, and where that's at. Ready to be fulfilled in the future. We can see our ship by date here, so we can see our schedule of when that needs to happen by. And that's basically just going to allow us to monitor our sales better and make sure that our back order items are being fulfilled eventually. I hope this video was helpful. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments below or get in touch. And I will see you next time. Bye.